Alright lines, so today we are finally finishing up the Resurrection Showcases for the three new Resurrectable Thousand Year Blood War characters. A few days ago we did Nemu, recommend you guys check that out. And then once more, a few days ago, when the co-op was available, we did showcase Toshiro, who is certainly going to be one of the better Resurrectable characters in the entire game. Although I do want to give one quick correction, which I didn't notice in the video, is that we took him into Inheritance Trials, and the enemies themselves are immune to a freeze. So we couldn't even inflict any stars on him besides his SA2, which just so happened could potentially inflict weakening. So despite him performing quite decent in that particular quest, that was him at his worst. So we definitely are going to retry showcase the character once more when a new Inheritance Child quest comes around, where hopefully they aren't immune to freeze, because he's going to be actually really good there. Luckily this time around though, in the case of Mayuri, he can inflict star elements, because every attack that he can inflict, inflicts paralysis. So pretty excited to showcase his character today because he is getting one of the bigger buffs due to the skills that he did pick up. So the starters, when it comes to his search rate, originally being 12% strong attack recharge is now that, with the addition of doing 16% more damage when at full stamina. Really good soul trait, can't complain about that, one of the best in the entire game, and it's for that reason I did re-roll the 6th slot to try and get an additional 500 SP, because I definitely will be using this link as a soul trait. I also just really like this character, Dom. He was one of my more favorite characters when he came out. So I'm excited to showcase him, especially with his new addition of skills. Because what you will see here is that he did pick up 20% more Havoc. And that is really good for him because the range he did have was one of his biggest complaints, right? His SA3 more so had a 900 AOE radius around him. It weren't even a full screen strong attack. Now with this Havoc, he finally has a full screen strong attack, which is what he should have had when they released all those years ago back in 2019. And then for the second skill that he did pick up is damage to paralyzed enemies plus 30%. So higher than the usual 20%, which I do like. Although if I'm being honest, I would have preferred if he had an increased chance to inflict status moments instead, because keep in mind he already has a built in 20% Berserker. Would have liked to see that get increased too. But at the very least, when he does inflict the status moment, his damage output is going to be quite decent. One thing I will say though that you will see in the showcase is that he is immune to every status element. He was the first character to actually get that. So it's going to be nice in this particular upcoming quest where we can basically stand wherever we want to. With that said though, let's try him out in some content. Actually, before we do, I don't know why I always do this. I always forget to show the builds. We have a lieutenant's badge, fortification build, and also T-set with all 30% SP. Links include Nini, Movie Ichigo, and of course, 4th anniversary Mugetsu, giving us a mixture of full stamina, recharge, and also more strong attack damage. And our bonus abilities are full stamina and long stride, just to make sure he's as fast as possible. And the long stride's gonna be quite fun in him, because he does have a very unique flash step. Look at this, man is breezing through the map. He has the Quinty skates on, it's really cool, and you even see it on his Nat string. Visually, I think this character just looks quite frankly amazing. I love the purple and yellow that he has going for him. SA1 going to be a beam forward, SA2 being a lunge, and then his SA3 now with the addition of the 20% Havoc is now on above force, which feels really smooth to play around with. Honestly, gameplay-wise right now, just a few attacks that we have used, it feels quite smooth. Let's go here, use the SA3. Look at that. That felt great. This is what the character should have had back all those years ago, man. I kind of feel like we missed out with a really potential good and fun character had he been given that extra range. So I'm kind of happy that the resurrection has now fixed this. And again, being able to stand wherever I want to is nice too. Let's go over here, use our soul bomb. I'll play that animation the next time we use it. It's a really good animation on the soul bomb itself. And then now can the SA3 hit? It did hit, but it didn't kill. He was too far outside the range, because it's not the usual 1,200 AOE around us, right? But while that was a quick single-player run, that actually felt quite smooth. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. Remember, he doesn't have killer here, and the enemies themselves also do have killer against us, so we do have to be a tad bit careful. But luckily, since we are mean to every status element, we have that extra bit of security. Trying that again, though. Let's go for it. SA1 there. Let's try and position our SA3 perfectly. There we go. And then the SA3 does clean up those mobs. That's really nice. In this case, I'm going to sob on here. There we go. And then use my SA1 there. Because this room, all our strong attacks will be back. Let's just use our SA3 to take out those mobs. Because I did know that there was going to be some behind us. Not really the best usage of that SA2. Probably could have, you know, positioned myself a tad bit better. But it's fine though, because we're into the next stage. Quite a linear map. So that SA2 beam is actually really smooth here. Look at that. Just, just two strong attacks to take out that map. And in this case, we get to grab the sword bomb. And then let off our altered Bankai. <laughs> It's a very interesting soul bomb. A good use of censorship. 
Because if you haven't actually seen what he actually does in this particular part of the fight, you might not actually know what's going on. But it does surround childbirth, and they actually kind of adapted that quite well, I would like to think so. In this case, though, a 36-second run, that's actually more in line with some of the other newer characters. And that's about Killer, to be fair. But remember, he is almost performing like a max transcendent character, level 10 focus, level 10 SP, 500 additional SP. But that's, remember, kind of what you want to do with characters like this that are like four years old. If you want them to kind of perform like a new character, you want them to be max transcended, right? And in this case, for the first three runs that we did do, 36 seconds is quite respectable. But let's take him into combat team and see if he does perform in there. All right, then. Here we go. Let's see how this does go. We do have to be a tad bit careful here. If we do like, get hit by those certain enemies, right? They have very fast activation times. And they themselves do have killer against us. So SA1 did actually hit there. Extra bit of havoc did, definitely did help us there, right? Let's go ahead and use our SA3. Unfortunately, did not position myself well there. Should not have done that. Gonna go ahead and use my SA1, then free, and that should go into the next wave. Obviously, damage output-wise isn't too insane here. We are having to use a few strong attacks, but that's the, very similar to what we had to do with Nemu, and of course, also Toshiro. And I know I've already mentioned it, but I think the immunity here is definitely the nice thing about him. You know, when we were showcasing Toshiro and also Nemu, we did have to be a tad bit careful where we had to stand. With Mayuri, we had that extra bit of security, right? As long as he don't take hits. So we actually did apply the paralysis there on that enemy. That was actually pretty good. So far, so good though. Just on the slower side as expected. I think the biggest decider is going to be the boss stage and how we perform against those enemies. Which is what we are currently on. So let's use our SA2 there into the 1 and then SA3 onto those next waves. Yeah, I, I really wish this character had an increased chance of inflicting stars but instead of damage to paralyze enemies. I feel like it would have been way more smooth for the character. Let's use that SA3 here though. There we go. Those two strong attacks were enough to take out most of his enemies there besides this 1. But the bosses have now spawned in. So what we're going to do here is use our SA2 as we get a tad bit close. Let her get close to me, then SA3 or SA1 into the free. Unfortunately, have gone here. So we've now lost a bit of, you know, extra damage. I might actually force myself to die here. We'll see how it does go, actually. Looks like we're doing like 13k on a hit. Happened to use a few extra strong attacks. Luckily, did paralyze there. So if we actually do paralyze against the boss here, it's going to make us speed through this quest a tad bit faster. But yeah, unfortunately, that lack of full stamina now is going to cost us a few extra seconds. A lot of seconds, to be fair. So you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and die here when the next set of bosses spawn in. Or now, I guess, just to have that extra bit of full stun damage. Because I do want to see what damage numbers are looking like when we actually go against the bosses that don't have Pierce Iron Skin. So let's go ahead and use our SA2. So let's lunge into this wave. Do like his lunge. I'm not a big fan of lunge SA1s anymore. Back when this character first came out, it was acceptable. But this one has always been cool because it's an AoE around him and then it's a lunge forwards. So that's SA2 there. Has the bosses spawned in? Yes, they have. So if we use our SA1 there, looks like we're doing like 20k hit. On the lower side compared to, I think, Toshiro and also Nemu. Who are doing like 30k. But going into the final room. Can we potentially nuke all the way through? We might be able to. Let's do a test. So we're getting a year special level 5. So he is getting that extra damage output. He does have a statum on his problem. With also weakened defense. So it might be able to nuke to the... F it didn't. It didn't. But it was close. So let's go here. Use our SA3 onto those. Okay, that was an absolute flop of a run. I went into the one spot where you just did not want to go to. Let's SA2 take them out. Make sure we don't get hit by that enemy. And then SA3. Has the boss died? Okay, apparently we killed about SA2 somehow. I mean, I guess to show the extra range help there, right? Not the greatest first run, I will say. We're definitely going to attempt that again, and I'll just speed through it. I did get hit there. I died. Sometimes forcibly so. 4 minutes to 41. So actually the worst performance when compared to the other two characters. It felt more smooth compared to Nemu and also Toshiro since we were immune to all the stars elements. But for our first attempt, we almost got a 5 minute run. That's on a very slow side. Toshiro without inflicting any stars elements. Nemu without inflicting any stars elements. Both got around 3 minute clear time. So let's try that once more. Hopefully this time without taking any damage. All right, then, so jump cutting into the final stage. This time, we're going to try and use our sub bomb correctly. In this case, we're going to go here, use our SA1 to try and weaken them a bit. Then use our SA3 back up a bit because we want to do a few just extra hits onto those enemies. And then let's use our sub bomb. So now this should hopefully nuke into the final stage, which is going to apply the weakened defense. And that lets us do around 60% more damage because we're also doing 30% more damage to enemies that are actually paralyzed. So in this case, looks like we're doing around 36k hit with the weakened defense and the paralysis and that's ideally what you want to do in that final stage so in that case that was a much better run don't want to show the whole thing because it just consisted of me using my strong attacks didn't get hit once luckily and we did get a few paralysis procs on the bosses themselves so in that case a lot more in line with the other two characters around three minutes closer to four minutes in this case 
Obviously, to no one's surprise, you really shouldn't be using this character into the Ultra IT when against enemies that you don't have killer against. I think he's going to be a lot more impressive when he has killer. But I think in single player content, you can have definitely a bit of fun with him. He performed quite well, to be fair. In the much difficult quest, he is going to want to have killer. But his gameplay is quite enjoyable, so it's not too bad, honestly. Next up, though, we're taking him into Epic Raids. Coincidentally, the Mayuri Epic Raids. We are not a bonus, but we do have the following set of accessories. Again, very similar build on the Lynx. And in this case, we have three Tosh Repeds giving us 60% full stamina and also 60% more strong attack damage. So in this case, then we're going to see how long it takes them to do 15 million damage. Luckily, though, we actually do have killer advantage. So that's actually going to be quite nice to get that extra 20% damage output. Let's go up here to make sure that puddle doesn't, you know, get in our way. At the same time, we want to make sure we do avoid those tornadoes. We really shouldn't have a problem in these particular phases. I think the extra damage output is going to be quite nice here. Let's use that as a free. Already going into the second phase, which is quite nice to see in, what, just 20 seconds? Damage output looks like we're doing around 100k per hit. In this case, let me use my Storm now just to get it out of the way. Storm is doing a lot of damage, and we did 160k there after using our Storm, which did apply the double weakened defense and, of course, also extra paralysis. Didn't actually realize until just now, actually, you actually see Nemo appear in this map. That's kind of cool. She actually attacks with Mayuri. Okay. Again, I haven't had much time to actually play this particular quest because I've mostly been doing IT in the Cop quest, but we're just so close. One more strong attack. There we go. In that case, it took us just a minute to do a million damage. That's not too bad, to be fair. A lot faster than Nemu, but Nemu did have to... Nemu had the disadvantage of not having killer effects. And we had to waste time getting at low stamina. And at least when it comes to my epic raid pets, full stamina pets are just way better. Since we were getting the extra 60% Berserker and 60% full stamina. Whereas Nemu's case, we were just getting 90% low stamina damage and no extra Berserker. So I think damage output wise, Nemu and Mayuri are very similar. If Nemu had the same opportunities with the same build set. And Tosh will also clear around the same time too. So honestly, not too bad. Epic Raid performance is a lot better than his IT performance, to say the least. But with us, the lads, that was the showcase for today. Mayuri's new resurrection. Honestly, a really solid upgrade. More damage output, assuming you inflict this stat as a man, would have definitely changed that around personally, but it's not that big of a deal. He most importantly did get the upgrade on his range, which is desperately needed for a character like this. It does feel way more smooth using him. And of course, he also did get more damage out full stamina. So if you don't want to use the character, as always, he's going to be a very, very good link. One of the best in the heart attribute and maybe you already have him five out of five this character is one of the more common fouls in the blood of characters alongside nemu and also toshiro so it is quite good that all three of them did get links because i know a lot of people again myself included have the entire banner five out of five either way though let me know your thoughts on the character below i'll see you guys next time take care and peace